Hi, this is Steve Barton for Solid Rock Machine Shop Incorporated. Today we're here with Jonathan, a good friend and co-worker of mine. Jonathan is uh, going to make a, a set of bench stones. Uh, if you've been watching our series, uh, you, you can see that the last few videos we've been talking about these uh, bench stones uh, that once you take a diamond wheel and grind, get all the grit on the same plane, uh, that it just changes the whole dynamic of these stones. They got uh, different uses, uh, but they're pretty awesome. Uh, also, uh, Robin Rinsetti, he's the one uh, who made a video on that we watched where we got this idea from. We're not going to go on all the ins and outs, what these stones are used for, how they're used. Uh, you can check out Robin's video. We'll put a link to it in the comments section. And he explains this far better than, than I would ever be able to do anyhow. So I encourage you to, to look at that. Also, we'll have a, a link in the a comment section. Jonathan, he's going to be making uh, some of his own videos. And uh, the first video he's got, he's showing off uh, some of the tools that he has. And uh, he's uh, just going through his toolbox on that. So we're going to put a link to that. And Jonathan will tell you a little bit more about uh, uh, his channel and what he's planning on doing with that. And then he will get in and show you some of the, the steps and procedures that we're using the grainy stone. So I'm going to just turn it over to Jonathan right now. So go ahead and check my video out. And if you want anything described better or in more detail, let me know in the comments. And I'll make another video about that. Uh, and I might even throw some videos that are not related to machining up. Uh, and you can check them out too. But as far as this goes, uh, right now we got some Starrett shim stock that we cut down into smaller pieces so we can get a three-point contact. The, these stones don't come in perfectly flat and you want to hold on to it on three points so you can get it perfectly flat. And you just want to get it locked in there pretty good. There's another video about Steve making this that you should go check out if you haven't seen it already. Um, and to use this, what we're going to do is use a zip tie to kind of hold this piece up on an angle and then take this out right before the magnet's turned on so it pulls, it, pulls the stone down to the magnet. It will also push it into the back stops and keep it held in place. And that holds it in place pretty well. Earlier on the first block, I was pulling up on it as hard as I could pull up on it, and I couldn't get it to move at all. So it's pretty good setup. So I just touched off on the stone, and you can even see just from touching off, it's not flat. I'm gonna use this full width of the wheel and plunge down and I think about five thousandths will be enough to get it cleaned up. So now that I've just touched off, I'm just gonna make passes back and forth as I'm dropping it down. And then once I get that, I'll come up, move over the half inch, the width of the wheel, and plunge down. And then once that's all flat, I'll come back and make a couple of finish passes, a couple of tenths at a time, make a finish pass, do that twice, and then I'll make a blank pass, blank pass back, blank pass across, and blank pass back again. And if you 
watch the last video of the diamond wheel getting trued up, you can see it's not perfectly flat, so making multiple blank passes will get this stone smooth and flat and where I want it to be. When I make the blank finish passes, I'll have a slower speed here and a slower cross speed than roughing it in. So now that we got the first side of this flat, I pulled them shims out and put this right on the magnet. I also marked it up with pencil so when I'm plunging down on it, I can see. I don't think I mentioned why I plunged down, uh, but that's because if we were just to touch off and go down ten thousandths and just feed across, on that diamond wheel, we're going to wear a taper into that wheel and then it's only going to be cutting on that back edge where if we plunge, move, come up, move over, plunge, come up, move over, plunge, it's going to keep that diamond wheel nice and flat and in good condition. I think if you check Robin's video out, he can go into more depth and describe it a lot better. Uh, we're just kind of copying that and trying to get the results that he got. Alright, now we've got the biggest surfaces ground on these two stones and I kind of just want to show you how it works. Um, on Robin's video, he always said to rub them together to clean anything out before every use and I just want to show you this grind finish. This is right off from the surface grinder and then this And now you can really see some of the shiny points and what that stone did to the, all the microscopic high points. And if you like what you see, Hit the like button and subscribe and we'll see you next time.